So if you're in RV transport, especially, um, if you've ever had the had it happen to you where you drive across the country, you get where you're going, your battery is dead. And whenever you uh, go to raise the jack up, it just won't raise it up. It's either not got enough power to raise it all the way up, it's completely, completely dead. And they have to bring the jump box out and get off of whatever the situation. Um, I have, when I first started doing this, that happened to me a couple of times and I made a wire that plugs into the seven way that charges the battery while I'm going down the road. This one that I'm gonna show you how to make, unfortunately does not work well with Fords. I've, uh, I ordered the stuff off Amazon and I made them for, I made probably about 15, 20 of them and just was making them up as I went along. When I get bored, I would sit down and make a couple up. And sure enough, I'd see people out here and there and I sold quite a few of them. I, me being me, I gave a few of them away. Um, but uh, I was gonna show you today how, I, I, my friends tell me I should make these things sell them and I have made a few and sold them. I would rather make a video and show you how to make your own the most cost effective way that I've figured out how to do it. And uh, that way, if you make one, something happens to it, you make another one. You know, I ran off and left two of these things in campers whenever I drove off. Cause a lot of times whenever I'm put, I put my battery on, especially on a fifth wheel, and then I'll take the charge wire and I will put it in the battery box and leave it all in the camper. And I've drove off and left two of these in two years. So to me, it's just, a lot better to show you guys how to make your own so i'm gonna explain this right here the first one that i made was just a blank seven-way plug you plug it in it would charge a battery this one has a led indicator on it and you can get this thing for a lot cheaper if you order it off amazon if you go to o'reilly's you can pick one up if you go to most any of the major parts stores you can pick one up but if you order it off amazon i found they're just a whole lot cheaper a fraction of the cost so I'm gonna start with this. All right, uh, we can get the tape off of it while I'm talking. I got on Amazon and just ordered, the first place I saw this was Napa, the wire like this, um, where you can buy it and it's already got the little insulation on it. And it only has a, a hot in the ground. You know, it has a red and a black wire. The wires do not have to be very thick. I don't remember what gauge this wire is, but it doesn't have to be, um, it doesn't have to be very thick because, because it doesn't really carry that much current. So all you're doing is maintaining this battery. You know, so these eyelets right here, I bought those at uh, O'Reilly's and they come in a pack where it's got the shrink wrap, slide the shrink wrap on, slide the eyelet on, crimp it down, pull the shrink, back, shrink wrap back up, and then heat it up. It, it's pretty easy. And then I bought some of this split loom and put over it and taped it up really good on the ends, on both ends. And when you do this, when you start putting your tape on, don't tape it up until after you hook it up to, until you, after you hook it up here. And the reason for that is you want that tape to build up big enough to fill this hole so you don't get any excess water and moisture and all that stuff in there okay you don't have to make it terribly long uh i want to say i've been making them about three feet and that's fine unless you have a reason that you need it longer or shorter you know but i, I would rather it be a little bit too long than not long enough so on this you're going to take out these four screws right here Okay, now that we have it taken apart, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to take these two wires, you can touch them together going through there, they're not hooked to anything, and I'm gonna feed them through, and you can see where that is actually pretty tight, because I have used this one before in full disclosure, it was actually on my 16 foot trailer, and the 16 foot trailer only had a full wire connector but i don't like the full wire connector on the flat four connector on these trucks so i i changed it and put a seven pin on it but i'm going to be adding backup lights work lights and all that to that trailer so when i do that i'll go back with another seven way so go ahead and slide that back so it is completely out of the way and i'm going to make sure that i tighten all these up now this piece will come come out too and then there you have it these wires go to the LED lights that tell you what's working, what's not. 
sole. I'm going to make sure I've got all these tightened up because I don't need all of them. And I did take this plug off the trailer so they're all loose. Okay, I have them all tightened up. Now, if you're looking at this, you'll see that this is taller. This is the keyway that keeps the plug from spinning inside of the connector. So that is the top. Whenever I put it back in here, I'm gonna want that sticking out through the top to keep everything lined up. All right, so when you're looking at your plug on the truck, when you're looking at the plug on the truck, I don't have one here handy, but I'm gonna show you this way. Okay, so we're looking at the seven pin connector on my Chevrolet. The top right hand blade is your positive. That is your hot. That's where your charge comes from. That's the one that charges the battery on the camper when you're going down the road. Directly across from it on the bottom. <laughs> All right, my plug on the Chevrolet is upside down. I just noticed that. So that's, if this plug was facing up like most are, this would be your height, this would be your ground. It's a good idea to check this with a test light first. But with this plug being upside down, then this one will be your height. This one will be your ground, okay? I'm gonna show you an easier way to check that out right quick. There is a wiring diagram on the outside of the cover on the Chevrolets. I'm not sure if they all have it, I don't know, but it tells you whatever pin on that plug does. Electric brakes, um, ground, you know, turn signals, what, whatnot. If you buy one of the connectors with the LEDs in it, like this one, and I will link all this stuff in the description right down to the wire. You may not want that much wire, you know, cause I bought it on a roll, but I'll link it to you. That way you have an idea of what you're getting and I'll link this actual wire that I bought. All right, so with the LED connector, it makes it a little bit easier because now you pull this off and you're looking at it. And like I said, the top right hand on the, female side on the truck side will be the top left hand on the male side the plug side there is a red wire going to there so what we're going to do is connect the red here we're going to connect it that to open up we're going to connect it to the red on that plug so that is, that is a um, definite perk of ordering, of getting one with the LED lights in it. That way your wires are color coded on the inside. And tighten this up pretty good. Now we're gonna go directly across, like I was talking about, the white wire right here is gonna be your ground. So we'll go ahead and loosen this. I try not to take the screw all the way out. Just loosen it up enough that I can get my wire under there. And this is a pretty thick wire. So Got that one. There they are, they're both good and tight. So now, all I'm gonna do is put it back together right like that. Now, I'm going to slide this back up on there and line everything up everything line back up and all snap back together pretty good and where i tape this up 
is the fattest part of that tape is right there where all that comes together. So me personally, I'm gonna go ahead and snug this down. It wouldn't hurt to put a little uh, dielectric grease or something there to help even more so keep the water out. And right here, something that I don't like, I'll play with that forever until I get it right. Um, that rubber gasket needs to be to the outside. And I probably will, after I'm done, turn the camera off and all, I probably will go ahead and put, put a little bit of dielectric grease in there just to help kind of shed the water out. Even though this thing doesn't, it's not like a trailer plug. It's not going to be really bad out in the elements. It is, you know, it's still it's still good practice to keep it put up. Because most of the time you're going to hook this unless you're in the position where you don't have a bed plug. You're going to plug it in in the bed anyway. And like with me, I have the bed cover. So this thing is never out in the elements really. So there's that. And... Now, it still didn't go together like I wanted it to, but you guys get what I'm doing here. I will probably take it back apart and put a little more tape on it, thicken it up a little bit more, but I'm just trying to make it a little quicker for the video's sake. There is your battery charge wire. Now, because it's easier to see, I'm gonna plug this one in the bed. And I, if you plug this thing in, make sure that these wires do not touch and the red wire does not touch anything if it's not hooked to the battery and i'm going to explain why you would ever want to do that here in just a minute also okay so i'm going to go ahead and start the truck up now you see the bottom right hand corner that led is still burning that's because at all times on the chevrolet it's constantly trying to charge that battery on your camper it's constantly su supplying power to the camper or whatever trailer you're pulling. All right. Now that being said, here's brake lights. Left turn. Right turn. Reverse lights. Reverse lights off. Marker lights. And now I'm gonna turn my full ways on. I'm gonna put it in reverse. Set my parking brake, hope it doesn't run off with me. Yep. The only one that is not lit up right now is where it says TB, trailer brakes. All right, and I don't know, I've never tried this, so. Yeah, it's showing the trailer brakes are not hooked up because there's nothing in that wire. So in the event that I had a this plug on an actual trailer, it would show me that the trailer brakes were functioning. Okay. So if you guys have been keeping up with my videos, you've probably seen me do this before. But if not, um, go ahead and take your wing nuts off. And I did find a nut that would fit on this one. That way you're just flat out not having to twist down the whole threads. I mean, I don't know if that's good or bad, but it's what I do. And then I will lay this one right here. Red on positive. And I try to make sure and face these in such a way where they won't be sticking out here. There's my negative. Now, all of the lights you can test with it hooked up except for the battery charge wire. And the reason I say that is because if you look here now, Make sure you see it. Or I'm trying to make sure you see it. But uh, that light's on. So when you supply power to it from either end, it lights that light up. Now, that's not a lot of help on the battery side in my personal opinion. But go ahead and put that, put that down. Put your 
cover back on. Go ahead and feed my strap underneath here. When you get your strap, when you start doing this, as far as the RV transport goes, um, you can take your strap and cut it because a lot of times you're not going to need all the length that comes with the strap. Don't cut it too short. Use it multiple times first before you actually cut it because if you, if not, you'll cut it too short. Some of the trailers are, mount, the battery mounts in different places and you want to make sure that uh, you don't mess around and cut that too short. That's, 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 that'll make for not a fun day. You had to find another strap. And if you see how I did that, that works really good for me. Even when it's on a trailer blowing down the road. And when you bring it back in. So now we're ready to hook the set the battery in, hook it up. I'm not very gentle with my battery. Alright. So a few minutes ago we checked it. You guys seen that, that the lights were on. You know, the light is still on. Of course, my flashers are still on too because I forgot to cut them off. But um, yeah. So as long as this left back, left light on the bottom over here is on, your battery is charging. All right. So now that my battery is charging. You know, that, that, that's all there is to make, making a battery charge wire. You do not have to buy the fancy one with the LEDs, but I prefer it. I mean, that way, if I have lights that stop working on my trailer, say I'm going down the road one night, my turn signal quit working. I can look right there until, even if I got the trailer hooked up and everything, I can unplug and plug it in like a test light, like a tester, and make sure that everything's working like it should. Unplug it, watch that hot wire, don't let it get against anything. Unplug it and uh, plug my trailer back in. If, I'm, if I've got power right there, I know it's in the trailer. If I don't have any power right there, I know I need to start checking my fuses. So yeah, I really like that. I would recommend it to anybody, especially doing this line of work where anything where you've got to keep a battery maintained in the back of the truck, you know? So uh, yeah, uh, I'm gonna link all this stuff in, in the description where you can get it on Amazon. That's where I get all the stuff when I, when I made the 15 or 20 of them. Um, but you can walk into any Napa, uh, O'Reilly's Advanced, anywhere like that and get that same connector and three feet of wire that's, you know, hot in the ground together. You know, you don't need anything more than that. And uh, a couple of outlets to go on the battery, you know. So I like it. It gives me peace of mind to know whenever I get to Indiana and everybody else sitting out there with their hood up and jumper cables on their battery or they're plugged, got their battery on the camper and they're plugged in, just sitting there wasting time, waiting on the battery to charge up enough that they can raise the camper up. That's my peace of mind knowing that I'm gonna throw my battery on and I'm gonna be able to go ahead and go get on to the next issue. There's always something, you know, and it just a little peace of mind knowing that's not gonna be my something. So I hope this video helps you out. <clears throat> and like I said, these do not work too good on the Fords. For whatever reason, I made one for a guy that's got a Ford and he cannot use the one with the LEDs in it. I think, if I remember correctly, he said a straight plug with no LEDs would work fine, but the LEDs threw the Ford off really bad. So if you got a Ford, do some more research on that before you do that. I would try one that did not have the LED tester in it and that I think that one would do you right. Uh, but I would definitely stay away from the LEDs with the Ford, but the Dodge and the Chevy, I've seen them on both of them. My buddy's got them. Y'all, you know, uh, yeah, they have no issues. I have no issues. So, all right, guys, I hope this video helps you out. Like, share, subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.